March 19th. This morning we have a little bit of uniqueness. We have a special emergency meeting that will begin in closed session and then return to open session, after which we will commence our regular meeting of March 19th of 2020. So for the record, we have Council Member Esparza, Council Member Capriolio joining us via phone. I do need a motion and a second to approve the emergency meeting. All right, no, is there any opposition to an emergency meeting this morning? Seeing none, we, the emergency meeting will begin in closed session before we go there though. I do wanna take over um, the flexaloo and uh, our pastor will come and do the vocation. So please come forward and then we'll follow with the flexaloo. Dear Lord, we come to you today and we thank you that we have a city that is caring about its citizens and has desires to do the right things. And Lord, today I pray that you would give these men, these women, these leaders wisdom, wisdom past their knowledge, wisdom past their experience, but Lord, that you would give them wisdom to serve this community properly. Lord, I pray also that you would give them faith faith to believe that you are in control. There's a lot going on right now with the virus and so many other activities. Can't imagine the amount of phone calls they're getting and questions they're having. And I pray that you'd give them faith. Let them be people of faith and wisdom, not of fear. And Lord, I pray that you'd give them unity. Lord, as they lead, I pray that you would, through the collective counsel of many, there would be unity to make decisions that are in the best interest of this community and the best interest is of the small businesses and the best interest of all of the different people who are impacted and even today are fearful and concerned. So give them wisdom, give them faith, give them unity. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. For the record, we have a full council in attendance. Council members Parza and Caprioli will join us over the phone. Legal counsel, will you please outline what will be discussed in closed session? In closed session, we'll have conference with legal counsel concerning public security. Thank you, and we'll be back once we commence the open session. to connect via phone, and then we'll begin the meeting. As far as it's on. Council Vice President Capriolio, are you on the line? Nelson, just. That's Nelson. It's the millennial. Nelson. 
He's a senior millennial. <laughs> I can hear you guys. Oh. <laughs> He's a, does Paul know the new number? He's a snowflake millennial. Millennial. Vice President Capriolio, are we ready to go? Yes, there's been uh, some technical difficulties as usual. It's okay, it's the millennials' fault on the other line, so it's not yours. Councilwoman Soria Carbasi, we're ready to begin. Is the millennial self quarantine like? To my council colleagues on the phone, we're going to ask that you speak very slowly so we can clearly hear your comments for the record and for the discussion that we may have this afternoon, this morning. With that, we are officially back into open session at 929. There was no action taken in closed session, but we are ready now to consider action in open session. Do I have a motion? Second. The motion has been made to approve the item, matters posing a threat to the security of public buildings, security essentials, and other, um, other items. We will have legal counsel read the full description of actions that we're about to consider. Counsel, you have the floor. Yes, the council is considering an emergency ordinance. Uh, the ordinance would be effective during the duration of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the, the ordinance will consist of the following provisions. Uh, the city shall not discontinue utility and sanitary service to any customer for reason of non-payment uh, with no late fees or interest. And any customer whose utility service has been shut off or terminated for non-payment shall be restored service without reconnection charges. Uh, all non-essentials, oh, I'm sorry, non-essential city services may be suspended, including but not limited to requests under the California Public Records Act. We will be getting notice out that we will be responding to requests after the emergency. Senior hot meal programs shall continue with appropriate health and safety precautions. City buses shall be cleaned and disinfected at least daily. Uh, and the transportation department shall have full authority to modify or add bus routes and schedules to accommodate the public need and welfare during the emergency. As of March 4th, there shall be an instituted a price and rate freeze on consumer goods and lodging facilities. Uh, 
rent deferral eviction moratorium and foreclosures. Uh, no residential tenant in the city shall be evicted due to loss of income related to a business closure, loss of hours or wages, layoffs or out-of-pocket medical expenses caused by the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, commercial landlords in the city are hereby prohibited from evicting commercial tenants for non-payment of rent in connection with the outbreak. Uh, a tenant must notify the landlord that they cannot pay rent due to a COVID-19 related impact. Uh, they must provide written notice, some kind of documentation to their landlord. Then they have at least six months after the termination of the emergency to repay any back rent due. It is not a waiver of rent, it's a deferral. Uh, the eviction moratorium shall be in effect for 30 days and may be extended by the council for an addition, additional 30 day periods so long as the city's declaration of local emergency is in effect. Uh, residents and businesses should not face foreclosure as a result of the outbreak. Lenders are encouraged to provide a forbearance agreement for up to six months without impacting the borrower's credit. Uh, city staff is directed to apply for all available state and federal funding related to the emergency. And then the city manager or designee is directed to identify funds and create a COVID-19 emergency response fund to support city actions that are appropriate and necessary to address impacts from the pandemic and then report back to the council at the next council meeting concerning uh, the recommendations. That's it. Thank you, legal counsel, for that description of the administrative ordinance uh, action that we're about to consider. Is there any member of the public that wishes to address the council on this item? Uh, council, there's one other item that should be included. Uh, there will not be any payments made under money back guarantee during the emergency too. Thank you. David Taub, 1396 West Herndon, Suite 101. I'm a reporter with GV Wire. I just want to express concern that uh, what you mentioned about the Public Records Act, I believe transparency in our government is essential, even in our emergency times. So I hope you please take that into consideration. Thank you, David. We are intending to just suspend it for a small period of time and continue it after we are able to um, get over the significant emergency before us. With that, do we have any other comments from the members of the public on this item? Please step forward. Hello, Council President, members of Council. Um, Sam Frank, President of FCA. Uh, I'd like to just say that under uh, bringing in all funds available for, from the federal government that um, I'd like to see um, a specific action and information given out to employees about the new federal benefits signed into law yesterday, um, HR 6201 benefits, which give 40 hours of sick leave for people to use. Um, I know people have been directed to use their own leave time per se, and they would have to do that, but I'd like to see some kind of information get out to the employees about if they're using their own leave time because they're sick or have a family member who is sick or have a child who is home from school, that they would be reimbursed <clears throat> if we get that money from the federal government. Thank you. Thank you. With that, is there any council members wishing to speak to this item before we call for a vote? Seeing none, city clerk, please do roll call. Councilmember Bredefeld. Yes. Councilmember Chavez. Yes. Councilmember Esparza. Aye. Councilmember Carbasi. Aye. Councilmember Soria. Yes. Council Vice President Capriolio. Yeah. And President Arias. Yes. The emergency ordinance is approved unanimously. Thank you. This concludes the portion of the emergency meeting for March. 19th, we will now commence with our regular scheduled council meeting. City Clerk, will you take roll call please for the regular scheduling, regular scheduled council meeting of March 19th? Council Member Bredefeld. Here. Council Member Chavez. Here. Council Member Esparza. Present. Council Member Cavassi. Here. Council Member Soria. Here. Council Member Capriolio. Here. And President Arias. Present. All right, City Clerk, are there any changes to the March 19th agenda? I have a couple of changes. The first one is item 1C is in Charlie. I need to read the following into the record. 
The staff report correction under background section assigned salary range to background investigator in Exhibit 2 should read E16, not E15. And a corrected copy has been uh, brought to the clerk's office. The second change on the same item is the attachment salary table 6 amendment to FY20. Salary resolution 2019-135, red line, page 2-1, corrected salary range assigned to background investigator to reflect E16 range, and a corrected copy was submitted. The final change on this item is attachment salary tables, sixth amendment to FY20 salary resolution 2019-135, final, page 2-1, Corrected salary range assigned to background investigator to reflect the E16 range, and a corrected copy has been submitted. Um, the following items are removed from the agenda. Um, one S is in Sam, city attorney's contract. Items 5A and 5B under closed session are also being removed. Motion to approve. Second, city clerk, can you just read back the items that are being pulled? Item 1S is in Sam. Item 5A and 5B under closed session. Okay, thank you. Do any council members have changes to the ag agenda at this time? Council Member Bredefield? Yeah, I would uh, like to remove from the consent cal calendar 1B. 1D as in dog? B. B as in boy. B as in boy. Yeah, there are people who are still trying to uh, meet with uh, council members to dis address this issue, discuss it, and so I'd like to remove it, give them a little time to, to meet with you. Is there any objections to having the item removed from the agenda today? I Council Member Carbasi? We have local 753 here, and um, they've talked to me several times, and I know they want to hear this today. But I respect Councilor Bredefeld, he's right, if someone hasn't had a chance to speak. Would you like to comment at all? Yes. Would you mind if we take a little more time so the council members can confer with you and staff? That's the request Councilor Bredefeld's making. Uh, so before we, we ask for more time, Councilor Carbasi, I'd just like to remind the council that we haven't decided if we're meeting again at the next meeting or if this emergency is going to limit our um, future council meetings. So I would ask us to do as much business today as we possibly can since we're all here and, versus and our, hoping our for future meetings. I, I don't know if I'm pushing in. I know mics are live right now, so I'm just going to jump in. Go ahead, please. Um, my preference would be to keep the item on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Um, if at all possible. Okay. All right. Fire Chief, I st you'll remain here and we'll hear the item. Thank you all. Um, Council Member Bredefield, any other items? Well, you have to take a vote to keep it on. I mean, if you do want to keep it on, but I think we need to take a vote. Right? The question, Legal Counsel, is Council Member Bredefield would like the item removed from the agenda. Do we need a vote to keep it on? Correct. Uh, any council member can remove something that takes a majority vote to keep it on. I'll make a motion to keep the item on the agenda. No. Second. Any opposition to keeping the item on the agenda? No. No. Okay. The item remains on the agenda. Thank can you. Can I do a roll call vote on that? Sorry. So I can make Go sure ahead. I have it right. Oh, so okay. we're going to do a roll call vote, council members, on keeping item 1B as in boy, the fire fees. Uh, the administration would like to have the item heard today. The roll call vote is a yes to keep the item on the agenda, a no to remove the item to, uh, from the agenda today. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Bredefeld. No. Council Member Chavez. Yes. Council Member Esparza. Aye. Council Member Carbasi. Aye. Council Member Soria. Aye. Council Vice President Capriolio. Yes. Yeah. And President Arias. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Councilmember Bredefield lost six to one. So one for the council, zero for Councilmember Bredefield today. Um, all kidding aside, council members, I would ask you today, all your mics are kind of on, no matter whether you're having side conversations. So please limit those side conversations so that we don't confuse the people on the phone. With that said, any other items 
that the council members would like to remove from the agenda today. Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve the motion. agenda. Motion made by Council Member Vice President Capriolio, second by Member Chavez. Is there any opposition to approving the agenda today? Seeing none, we will go to Council Member Reports and Comments. We will start with Council Member Capriolio and then Council Member Esparza if you have any reports or comments for the public. Uh, no, I Thank you, Council Member. I just mentioned that he is home. I say to the protection of the rest of us in the Council and City. Council Member Sparza? Yes, that's my comment. I spent a similar predicament observing our people as much as possible. From yesterday's um, uh, meeting where uh, people were told to shelter in place. Uh, following that, uh, we got probably 75 calls, emails, contacted via social media uh, about tremendous confusion relating to the businesses that are closing, losing jobs, uh, people calling in tremendous, uh, frankly, panic and concern. Uh, the fact is that um, we look at the businesses that are going to be closed, there are 70 different types of businesses, um, anything from uh, art galleries to salons to banquet halls to health clubs to gyms to churches, uh, and you can have uh, multiple businesses in this type of category. So there's 70 different categories, and people are literally losing their jobs today as a result of uh, the decision that was made yesterday by closing businesses that we deem non-essential and um, telling people to shelter in place. There's real pain. There's real suffering as a result of that decision. Uh, the media breathlessly uh, covered the staged event yesterday. Uh, I encourage the media to breathlessly cover the pain and suffering that is going on in our city now as a result of that decision because the pain is real. Uh, there are people who really work paycheck to paycheck, have bills to pay, have the uncertainty of their future work, uh, all as a result of this action that was done unilaterally without uh, the Fresno County or the city of Clovis uh, participating. And that's very, very uh, troublesome to me. Uh, yesterday, uh, Council Member, uh, not Council Member, Assembly Member uh, Juan Arambula was here. Uh, I'm not sure why uh, Assemblyman Patterson and State Senator Borges were not invited to also give us an update. And Assemblymember Arambula came and criticized our colleagues over at the Fresno County Board of Supervisors, I think inappropriately so. We talk about the health, safety, and welfare of our city. Uh, I would encourage uh, Assemblymember Arambula to work on the state law that makes the highway patrol have 72 hours to notify the drug addicts and the homeless that are on our embankments, and uh, they can't remove them. They can only notice them. I don't know if they notice them on a tree or a rock, but they're dug in to those embankments. And I would encourage uh, Juan Arambula to be working on that as opposed to coming to City Hall to criticize our Board of Supervisors. Additionally, when we talk about health and safety or welfare of our community, Props 47, Props 57, and AB 109, which releases all the inmates into our community, lowers all the drug laws. That has created significant problems in our community in terms of health, safety, and welfare. And the state, which he is responsible for, is also uh, dispensing one million needles to drug addicts every year, uh, 20,000 every week, within two hours in our community as a result of uh, what he is doing and his colleagues uh, are doing. 
that really has an impact on the health, safety, and welfare of our community. So I'd encourage him to be working on that. And lastly, I want to just say one other thing. Um, I want to commend our city manager and, frankly, our uh, police chief as well, because uh, what was issued yesterday was encouragement to shelter in place. What was really uh, being worked on yesterday was to criminalize people who would not follow that order. Uh, basically, it was to uh, literally, uh, in the document, had a Fresno Municipal Code Section 2-512, that people who violated that order would have been punishable as a misdemeanor upon conviction by a fine of not exceeding $1,000 or by imprisonment for a term not exceeding one year. That's exactly what was happening unless our city manager said she wasn't going to sign that and our police chief said he wasn't going to enforce that. That's where we were yesterday. And so I want to commend you, city manager, and our police chief for having the wisdom and fortitude not to sign on to uh, something as outrageous as that. You know, the bottom line is we all have to work together as we deal with this very serious uh, pandemic. Uh, it's real. And uh, as I said yesterday, uh, people need to go to the CDC guidelines uh, to come look at the uh, appropriate guidelines to keep yourself healthy and safe. But right now what we've done is put people out of business, hurt lots of people in our city, and all of the non-essential services that we're not providing in our community, they are now going to Clovis and other communities. Um, it's a travesty in terms of what we've done. And as I've said, we need data to support that kind of extreme measure. We don't have that data yet. Uh, that's why Fresno County, which is responsible in terms of public health, has not initiated that order, and we shouldn't have done that as well. And I hope the media breathlessly covers the pain and suffering that is going on as a result of the action that took place yesterday. Thank you, Council Member Bredefield. Council Member Soria, you have the floor. Thank you, Council President. Um, first, I want to um, give thanks to our entire community for being cooperative in the efforts to combat, um, to flatten the curve of the coronavirus. I also um, want to recognize that we are experiencing some very difficult times for everyone as we're adjusting um, to the ever-changing preventative measures, essentially, what, uh, what it is what we're doing. And I do want to applaud the city council and our administration for working with us um, to demonstrate leadership and to take um, to make some of the most difficult decisions over the last couple days um, to try to prevent any deaths from happening. I want to thank also our first responders who are on the front lines um, responding um, not only to the everyday um, moments that they go to, but now um, other situations that may arise because of the emergency. I also want to thank our city employees I know that um, I've received many texts and calls from folks um, because of the uncertainty, um, but I appreciate all the work that they're doing, um, those that are working from home, um, to make sure that this city continues to run and provides um, the services that folks need at this moment. I want to give a big shout out to our grocery store companies like Vallarta Supermarkets, who are giving our elderly residents a chance to shop at their stores for their first hour of operation. Um, we must take care of our seniors. I also want to thank our school districts, um, including Central Unified and um, Fresno Unified, for providing meals to our students and their families in various locations throughout the city and for the flexibility that they are um, doing. Our, our city has also taken steps towards accommodating, accommodating our residents by extending, as you guys heard, utility payment deadlines to help with the stress of our families that are facing today and much of the uncertainty. I also want to thank my colleagues for unanimously supporting the emergency ordinance that will provide um, short-term relief for those families that do not, um, are, are unable to work um, or may not get um, the income because they have to have, you know, limited the hours for their restaurants. So I want to thank them um, for that. I also 
want to thank just everyone for their trust and for trusting the city of Fresno. Yes, we may not be completely aligned with the county of Fresno, but I will say that I am proud to represent the city, um, to see that we are taking leadership in this moment, because moments like this requ require real leadership, and we are looking out for the best interest of every single person that lives in our city, which is over half a million residents, um, including seniors and children and a lot of vulnerable people um, that could be impacted by this coronavirus. Um, I wanna assure everyone that each and every one of us is working extremely hard. My office, um, even though some, some staff members are working remotely, we're still responding to constituent concerns. We are trying to provide as much information, not only from the city's perspective, but other resources that may be available from the state and federal so that, that families can feel um, assurance that they're gonna receive the support and help that they need during these difficult times. So I just wanna make sure that Folks know that they can continue to call our offices. If you contact me via any social media platform on Facebook, Instagram, um, that we are gonna respond to your questions and concerns in a timely fashion. Again, thank you. I also would be remiss if I didn't say a special thanks to our city attorney and their staff. I know that they've been working um, pretty much you know, around the clock to work with us on the language to make sure that we're providing um, the best policy that would help um, the residents of the city. Thank you um, for everything that you guys are doing. Any other council members wish to speak? Just real quick. Council Member Chavez. Yeah, I just wanna briefly comment on uh, the rationale for the decision that we made uh, these last couple of days. Uh, and I wanna make sure folks understand that this is not an easy decision that this body had to make. And it was used using data, concrete medical data that the CDC is providing. This morning, uh, the president, President Trump, told us that we now have 10,000 cases of coronavirus in our community. Uh, we know that that number is going to exponentially grow. Um, and I want to make sure that folks understand that per CDC, this is not like the flu. This is a very dangerous virus because you can be asymptomatic and still be contagious. And that's important to keep in mind because some stats have been said that, you know, people die all the time about the flu. Well, the flu is still out there. A large number of folks still have the flu. But layer on top of that, the coronavirus, now we have a tremendous strain on first responders. That is why people see those tents being built out of Community Regional Medical Center out in Kaiser Permanente, because the medical professionals, the scientists that are tracking this data on a daily basis have been advising to get ready, to prepare. And so it is a difficult decision um, when you have to close businesses. But to me, I would much rather overreact and save lives, literally, than have to underreact and cause people's deaths. Because if we're being very honest, people are going to die from this, particularly those that are vulnerable, seniors, uh, folks with medical conditions. And so I just want to give a little insight to folks that want them to understand that this body was very meticulous, went through data, spoke to healthcare, medical professionals. I myself made over eight phone calls to local medical doctors on what they're seeing in their offices, in their um, consultories. And I wanna make sure folks understand that that's what we're doing. We're relying on the data. And it's a scary time, but we're gonna get through this. Um, and then another thing that I wanna make sure that we flag for the public is, and this is something that became very clear. As many of you know, I have the largest per capita of food processing and packing houses in the city. Um, I have large producers, JD Foods, Cornus, Kraft, Ledestri, Fury de Pasta, Riches. And so the, the nation's health and well-being is 100% tied to Fresno City and Fresno County and the Central Valley's health and well-being, which makes this decision even more clear for me. We need to keep those people healthy because if they're sick, if they're out of work, and they're out of the, those uh, much-needed supply food chains, the whole country can suffer. And so I take that as an extra precaution, uh, an extra layer of due diligence that we have to do. 
And so I just wanted to share with the public the rationale behind the decision that this body take, took. Now we're going to reevaluate this in two weeks and see where we're at. But um, I also just want to end by thanking our, our first responders. We know that oftentimes our first responders are out there and they don't know if the call they're going to has an individual there with the coronavirus. And that's very uh, nerve wracking because at the end of the day, you could potentially take that back to your family and to your loved ones. And so I want them to know that we're with them. We're gonna keep working with our police officers, with Chief, you've been very, very helpful and on it. We appreciate that. And we're gonna to continue to work through this. But again, we're gonna come back and we're gonna use data. We're gonna use advice from medical professionals. And I just want the public to know that, that that's where, where this council is. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Chavez. I, I do wanna save some comments you know, I've been getting a lot of questions on how we got here to the point of the decision we made yesterday. And there has been confusion, misinformation, overwhelming amount of information that's right and factual, but still is, people are having trouble processing it. And from my perspective, it starts at the top. On January 28th, the president claimed that everything was under control and there was nothing to worry about. On February 27th, he blamed the outbreak on immigrants coming in to our open borders. On March 7th, he compared it to the flu and minimized the spread and the threat level that it posed. On March 9th, the market crashed. The largest loss in market value in our country's history. On March 13th, a national declaration of emergency was declared. On Monday, he told the country to stay home that this was serious. T today, he announced that there's 10,000 cases. There are basic facts that we know. We have limited capacity in our healthcare system, limited capacity in our public safety, apparatus, and in Fresno, we have far more vulnerable folks to the flu and to the coronavirus, and a lot less resources from doctors per capita to clinics and hospitals than the Bay Area and New York. We are all trying to flatten the curve as has been dictated to us by the federal government. The governor has given us a series of executive orders authorizing us to use the powers in emergency situation. This isn't about whose fault it is or where we got good or bad information. We are tasked with protecting the health and safety of the city. And as much as I want to collaborate with other jurisdictions, I wasn't elected to represent the interests of the city of Clovis or the county. I was represented to serve the residents of the city of Fresno and to ensure their safety and welfare. And we have communicated and worked with the county. Before we had our meeting yesterday, we were meeting with the county supervisors and with the health officials. Our city manager is talking with them and working with them daily. We are all doing the best we can with the amount of information that we have, but there is some basic simple facts. The coronavirus on top of the normal flu is a real threat to the well-being of our city, and we have a responsibility to ensure the health and safety of the whole city. So I'm not going to apologize for overreacting because I don't want to apologize for people losing their lives because we failed to act. With that, Council, I think it's time to get to our regular agenda of the day. Thank you all. Consent, is there a motion to approve the consent calendar as presented? Motion been made. Member Chavez, can we just second it first and then we'll pull items? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm skipping ahead, that's right. My apologies. Do we have any items from the consent that would like to be pulled by the council? Council Member Soria? I'd like to pull item 1E. Council Member Bredefield? Yes, I, I would like to pull item 1B as in boy. Okay. And uh, 1F as in Frank. Any other council members wish to buy items from the consent calendar? Council 
President. Councilmember Carbossi. Item 1J. 1J. Clarification. Okay. Councilmember Caprilio or Esparza, do you have any items to pull from the consent calendar? Not at this time. Thank you. With that, do I have a no. motion to approve the remainder of the consent calendar? Motion been made by Member Betterfield. I'll second it. Before we take a vote, is there any member of the public wishing to speak to the council on items on the consent calendar? Seeing none, is there any opposition to approving the remainder of the consent calendar? Roll. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Member Carbasi, we need you for roll call. The roll call vote will be to approve the remainder of the consent calendar as presented. Member, uh, City Clerk, please take roll call. Council Member Bredefell. Yes. Council Member Chavez. Council Member Esparza. Aye. Council Member Carbasi. Aye. Council Member Soria. Aye. Council Vice President Capriolio. Yes. And President Arias. Yes. The item is approved. The consent calendar is approved. Now we will take the contested consent items one at a time. We'll start in an alphabetical order. Councilmember Bredefield, you have the floor with item 1B as in Bredefield. Yes. Um, I have the uh, objection that I've expressed before in terms of how large the fees are. I mean, I certainly understand the, the need to increase them. I'm also concerned about uh, tripling the uh, fee on fireworks stands. That's why I wanted to delay it to allow those people to, to meet with council members because they obviously uh, have a, uh, a great concern about that. Uh, my only stipulation if the council moves forward, and I think the council will, is that the fees that are collected by the fire department go to the fire department. And what's going to happen here is that fees are going to be collected and they're going to go into the general fund and the fire department will never see them. And uh, that ought not to happen with this. If there are fees being collected by the fire department, there are plenty of needs within the fire department. Um, I'm sure million dollars, millions of dollars worth of capital improvements, trucks, equipment, dryers, uh, all kinds of things that are needed. And if the council approves this, if the council approves this, if the council approves this, uh, it ought to go to the fire department. So that's what I would ask of the council. Thank you. So just to clarify, council member, are you making a motion to approve the item and having the money remain in the fire department? No, I want to listen to the discussion. Perfect. Thank you for the clarification. We're going to first go to Council Member, uh, who's punched up? Council Member Soria. I have a question um, for the Council Member. So, Council Member Bredefeld, so your concern is mostly with the fireworks. Do you want to bring? No, I'm, I'm concerned about how large many of these are. I mean, the, many of these fees are not only double the triple, some I think are even more than that. Um, I mean, I talk about the fireworks that stands out, but I, I look at all of them and they're huge. They're huge. The other issue that, that I was concerned about, I asked uh, last time about an updated uh, study and also a study that would look at efficiencies in the fire department because I think, you know, we can certainly find some. We can in every department. It's not just the fire department. It's every department. And as we're looking at you know, tripling fees and, or doing more, we ought to be looking at ways we can do some efficiency. So that's, those are the issues that I raised before uh, Council Member Soria, and, and that's the concerns I have. And I don't think the council is willing to do that. If they're willing to do that and have something that's up to date, I'm very serious about looking at uh, that study and then a, a, a approving fees from that. But we're looking at a 2011 study and an update just from a review by that same agency. I, can I call the chief up? Because I think that she could clarify that. I know that, yes, this is going back to 2011, so we know that councils before us have kind of kicked the can down the road. We know that people are not paying what the cost of the work that is being done. And given the times, it is important that we do recover enough cost to be able to cover for the services that the city is providing to our customer. So I'd like to hear from the chief, um, and I know that you talked about it last in the last council meeting, but I want to make sure that the public is clear because we have not raised these fees for ten, nine years, close to a decade. 
And can you maybe explain to us how we got to the proposed numbers? Sure. Uh, that is correct. Um, the fee update, uh, the last fee update was back in 2011 when there was a comprehensive task to, uh, time study done. At the time, the decision was made to only charge 40 to 46 percent on average of the actual cost of providing the services. Um, that has been the fee for the last nine years. Um, when we look at all of the other fees, we want to uh, charge what is the actual cost of providing the services to the for-profit companies. Um, I think that's important when the city um, is looking to do some other things down the road that we don't subsidize uh, for-profit companies uh, in, in this community. I think we need to bring ourselves up to um, what is proposed, which is 96.32% of the actual cost of providing each service. Uh, and, Why and is it not 100%, Chief? We, we tried to bring it uh, just slightly down from 100, uh, just to be in alignment with our original conversations with uh, the BIA. Um, we went back out. Uh, the BIA asked us to go have our numbers, the city budget and the city fire department budget office uh, numbers, and have them look like, looked at by a professional and outside agency. We did just that. They came back and said we should charge a little bit more or use CPI, which was a little bit higher. And in trying to be a little bit, uh, trying to find some middle ground, we brought it down to the same number that we originally had discussed. So that's, uh, that's how we got there. The time task study is something we are recommending uh, with some of the revenues from these new fees. Uh, it is going to be my guess that those costs will likely only go up than what is currently being proposed on the table. Um, our department is very efficient, and our members, the, the task and time it takes them to conduct a fire inspection, those things really haven't changed much. Um, so I don't see that number really going down, and, and, but I think it would be good to, to do a time test study in the next one to two years. When, when will you guys be doing an update again? So can we not wait 10 years? Was that because just there wasn't a will from the previous administrations to look at an update and pass it, or it was just the council? Um, I think we hadn't even updated any fees at the time for the last few years. Uh, there wasn't a will to do that. Um, but I think with those revenues, I think it's important that we do do a comprehensive time test study again. That's kind of an industry standard recommendation. But as you mentioned, we have uh, kicked this can down the road. The timing is awkward, but we can't just keep delaying this um, as we allow the city to subsidize for profit industry. Okay. So thank you, and I appreciate um, your response. I think I'll defer to my council colleague, and I might comment after you make your comment. I, I, I would like to make a motion. Um, I would make a motion to approve. Uh, the master fee schedule as is outlined uh, with the following provision. One, that those fees collected go to the fire department and that the fire work uh, fee remain in place. That one fee remain in place. All the other fees uh, would be as um, is outlined in the master fee schedule and I, I don't see why uh, that couldn't be supported. Council Member, I'm wanting to second your motion with one amendment if you would consider. What's that? that we require the administration to apply for federal funds to fund additional firefighters in this time of emergency. We anticipate there will be a significant amount of federal funds available. Absolutely support that. Okay. With that, I'll second it. Chime, may I chime in with that Yes. One? Give me one second, City Manager. We'll have Member Carbossi, and then we'll go back to you. Pardon me, City Manager. So um, I'm going to vote against that motion. I support more firefighters, but I'm currently in negotiations with Local 753, and they're speaking to the mayor, and I don't want those negotiations hampered by this motion, I don't. unless they'd like to speak. So, one, just for the record, we can't talk about negotiations publicly. There's a motion, there's a second. It, city Manager, would you like to speak? I would, thank you. Thank you. So I would ask that you 
have the administration look into applying for a safer grant as opposed to requiring us to do so. I want to remind Council, and we talked about this a couple meetings ago and met with a few of you, that the ongoing costs for the general fund, should we apply for a safer grant, and I believe, Chief, it was for nine firefighters, is $7 million over a five-year period. And a lot has changed with the economy in the last two weeks alone. And I just caution you that if we apply for a safer grant and we accept the grant, that it is really, really putting a burden on the general fund that we may not be able to, um, to sustain. I understood, um, City Manager. We do have the outstanding emergency declaration that requires staff to apply for all resources. So that's already in place, too. Applying for the money doesn't mean that we have to accept it. I think all of us would be extremely thoughtful about accepting money that we can't match or continue ongoing in future years, especially given the downturn on, in the economy. But with that... And the last thing I would request is that you just ask us or direct us to bring this back as a part of the budget instead of pigeonholing us right now. Okay. Wait, uh, Council Member Chavez and then Council Member Soria. Yeah, no, I, 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 I understand uh, the concerns that are being discussed, um, but, I mean, we just got through discussing or at least referencing the fact that our first responders have to go out there and make sure that, you know, they have the equipment and everything that they need. And more importantly, I think right now is that they have the manpower. Um, and, and I agree with, you know, just because we apply for a grant um, and for whatever reason um, we look at this during the budget and doesn't pencil out, we at least have the option. Of, of having a conversation about that. Um, but um, also, um, what I do know, and I think there's consensus, is that there are going to be a number of resources coming down from the federal government to help first responders. Um, and so I think that could possibly offset um, as well with some of those um, first responder funds that are going to be coming down, particularly when we know that um, we don't have the manpower in the city of Fresno. Great. With that, Council, just bear with me. I'm going to go to the Council members on the phone. Council Member Capriolio. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to support this uh, for either reason, but more particularly, if you can't limit the profit out of a statement to its interest rate increase per year, because we're eliminating a lot of support from the community to the community. And not just the private government. So, uh, I'm going to know. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Capriolio. Councilmember Sparza, you have the floor. Yes, uh, I am categorically supportive of the motion that's on the floor right now. Uh, I did have uh, one clarifying question. Uh, maybe the uh, Chief, to give some insight into uh, you know what portion or what percentage of the fees are we losing by making this exception for the fireworks? I, I expect a small amount, uh, but I just want to clarify. Councilmember Barza, can you repeat your question? You broke up. Yes, my question, uh, to be clear, is by making the exception for fireworks, uh, how much revenue and fees are we going to lose? Is oh, it the large percentage? Fire Chief, we have a question for you. The question from Councilman Esparza is, the motion is to approve all fees um, and maintain the firework fee at the current level. Would that be a significant loss for the fire department by maintaining the firework stand fee at the current level? I'm going to um, estimate it's around a $40,000 decrease in what is proposed. How much? 40000 A year? Uh, per year. Um, Thank you. So, Council Member Sparza and Capriolio, the chief said that it is a $40,000 decrease annually for the budget and... It's part of the overall fees. And what, what are we looking at in terms of percentage? What does that 40000 translate to? I, I believe, Chief, wasn't the total fees going to generate, it's in the staff, a couple of million dollars? Um, of course, the economists would make us do the math. It's about $54,000 
uh, annually. The uh, total increase revenue we are projecting is 2.2 million annually. Okay, Councilmember Barza, of the 2.2 million projected annual revenue from these fees, 54,000 of that would be lost if we maintain the firework fee at the current level. With that, um, there's a... Yeah, I can live with that. I will support the motion. Thank you. We have Council Member Soria, and then we're going to ask for a roll call vote. I'm ready to vote. Thank you. With that, and City this, Clerk. This is keeping the money in the fire department that are generated. Okay. So to repeat the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Before we go, the motion is to approve the increase in the fire fees. The money would remain in the fire department budget and we would direct the administration to apply for federal funds, including the SAFER grant, and bring it back to the council for consideration and to maintain the firework fee at the current level. With that, is there anybody from the public that wishes to address the council on this item? Please come forward. My name is Juan Hawk Kairahita, and I am the um, director and spiritual leader of the Four Winds Lodge. And no, we're not a hotel. Um, okay, everybody thinks we're a hotel. Um, well, we've been here in Fresno for a long, long time, and this is my first time uh, addressing the council uh, about the ongoing thing about the fees for fireworks. I just wanted to let you know. Uh, uh, Hopefully, I pray to God uh, that uh, this blows over with the coronavirus and we are able to function uh, normally again and at least have our 4th of July. It is very important, uh, 4th of July. Uh, 4th of July is not only for all our citizens that are patriotic, but it's also for our veterans. Uh, and this is a chance for us to show our patriotism. And not only that, but it's also a time for uh, gathering money that uh, us, the nonprofit organizations, uh, need desperately to function. Uh, and when I say function, uh, we uh, give water to the homeless, we provide blankets, we provide shoes. Sometimes they're donated, but donations are not enough. Sometimes we have to go out and buy them. Uh, my daughter uh, bought uh, something like 180 blankets just for the winter to give away. We made over 3,000 tamales to give to people. This money has to come out of our pocket uh, because um, we just don't get enough donations. Okay. Um, so we provide a service besides those kind of services. We provide drug and alcohol. We also do counseling. Uh, we go to homes nowadays because, well, that's the only way to get counseling out. I know the city provides these same services to its people, uh, be they homeless, be they whoever they might be. I know you guys do a great job, but uh, you can't do it all by yourselves. Sometimes the nonprofits have to uh, pick up the, the shoestring and, and help you tie it because uh, there's just a lot of people here. There's just so many people here. My organization started working here as a nonprofit helping only Native Americans, but we saw that this is not just a Native American issue, a problem that is in our city, the homeless, the hungry, the people that can't understand English, the people that can't read their, even their mail. So we try to start providing those kind of services. And those services cost. We have to pay people to provide those services in our organization. So we need this money. And I can understand that, that the fire department also needs the money, but tripling, tripling the, the, the cost of the license is Thank Just you. On too much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member of the public wish to speak to this item? 
All right, with that, City Clerk, we're going to do roll call on the following motion. A motion to approve the item as presented by staff to increase the fire fees. The revenue would remain in the fire department. The administration would apply for the SAFER grant and bring it back to the council for consideration if we're to receive it. And the firework fee will remain at the current level. Roll call, please. Council Member Bredefeld. Yes. Council Member Chavez. Council Member Esparza. Aye. Council Member Carbasi. Aye. Council Member Soria. Aye. Council Vice President Capriolio. No. And President Arias. Aye. The item is approved 6 1. Thank you, Fire Chief, and everybody else who spent years developing this proposal. The next item on the agenda is item E. A 1E, as in Edward, Councilwoman Soria, you have the floor. Good morning. I know that every time you guys have a surplus um, item, I'm having to have questions. So one of the things that I wanted to ask, um, because it was not included in the staff report, um, that if for this item and any future surplus you can include in the staff report. Description of the property, such as the size, because we have no clue. I have no clue what it is. Um, it, you guys only give um, the location. So um, I'd also like to know the history of the property. How did we obtain it? Why did we obtain it? Why don't we need it anymore? And I think those are pretty much it. So. Do you have answers to those questions on this particular property? Yeah, we can go through them. Which one would you like to ask first? Um, whatever, however you want to start. <laughs> um, the first question I heard you ask was the size. This um, property is approximately 15 acres. Okay. I don't remember your questions after that. Oh. The other, um, kind of the history of the property. Why did we obtain it? <laughs> How did we obtain it? How much did we pay for it? All that good stuff. Okay. Property. The property was acquired through litigation. A what? Through litigation. Um, it was paid for partially with judgment obligation bonds, those which have been paid off since October 2nd of 2016, and the amount paid for was $7.9 million through the settlement agreement. Why, why did we acquire it? Do we have... City Attorney, do you want to chime in on that? I know that there was litigation regarding the property. What's the question? I, I just wanted to know the history of why did we acquire this piece of property. Which piece of property is it? Maybe our public works director has a history. Go ahead. Good morning, Council. Scott Moser, uh, Public <laughs> Works Department. Uh, just in brief, uh, there was an application for development and the city denied that um, as a result of the required navigation easement from Sierra Sky Park. Um, so that was the origin of that litigation. It denied the property owner the use of property for development. So we bought it because we denied the use? And that, and that is the case if there is a uh, public use uh, that's required on the property. Um, there have been other situations such as uh, Many years ago, uh, I'll give you, Council, another example. Uh, we had development planned within the footprint of the Veterans Boulevard 99 interchange. Uh, the city denied the site plan, and as a result, the uh, landowner um, basically then requested, uh, took the position with their attorney that that was a taking, um, and then the city, through that process, acquired the property. In that case, we had funding. Um, that's a viable capital project. Um, there are other examples, uh, Herndon 99, or Herndon Golden State. Uh, over 20 years ago, the city acquired a piece of property because the city was reserving it for a future grade separation. So there, there is history on that type of situation, both here and with other public agencies. Okay, so I'd like to maybe sit down and talk to you guys more about this. I don't feel comfortable voting on it today, so if we could table it. Um, to the next meeting. Uh. Council President, since this property is actually in my district, if I can uh, ask a question. Um, Ms. Dodds, um, 
Can you also explain the challenges with this property because of the Airport Land Use Commission? Yeah, and I would also like to state that this uh, property was our already previously surplus land. Um, the challenge with the property is it's next to the Sierra Sky Park um, Airport, and as such, they have designated use um, in their Sierra Sky Park plan, and additional requirements come from the FFA and the Airport Land Use Commission. Um, so that essentially limits what you can do on part of the property that's in the clear zone. Which is a pretty sizable chunk of the property. It's approximately five acres. Of how many acres? Fifteen. Oh, wow. so one-third. Okay. And then residential really isn't an option for that property, correct? The other remaining development area is approximately eight to nine acres, and it's zoned office. Right. Thank you. Just a, a question for clarification. Uh, I'm assuming the property owner knew that he was by an airport when he purchased a property, and that he knew that he was under a flight pattern when he proposed a development, and that it would have to be approved through airport commission, land use, and the FFA, right? Is that common? I can't speculate. I would assume so. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I actually was... Go ahead. You I want to make a motion it. to approve. There's a motion to approve in a second. Before we go there, is there questions from the council members on the phone? Seeing none, is no. there? Go ahead. I have no question. Let's vote. You have the floor, Councilmember Capriolio. No question. Let's vote. No questions. Let's vote. Okay, we got the message. Is there any members of the public that wish to address the council on this item? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the council. Councilwoman Soria. Thank you, Council President. I, and I get that the property is in your district, um, but I think I ha you have to think sometimes of these issues citywide, and I have a responsibility to think about those issues citywide. And so when I'm thinking 15 acres, um, I'm thinking potential retail development. I'm thinking about the potential really asset that it can be to our city. And I don't want to be in a position, I want to be able to understand the history. The fact that you guys didn't include all this information is troublesome to me. Like you guys just expect us to say, yeah, let's send it out to be surplus property without having all that information to be able to make uh, a good decision. In my opinion, I think it's premature. I'd like to have a discussion. Um, with you guys about really what um, what you guys are intending to do. I think it is too valuable to be so selling it um, at surplus. I get some of the issues that you guys have noted with the airport's land, land use commission. I don't think, and I'm just asking for one more meeting. I, when you ask for a meeting to, to delay a certain issue, um, we respectfully give that to each other. And I think that this is so important. 15 acres, it's not like half an acre. It's 15 acres. I think there's a lot of value into having this asset. And I think that um, it would be responsible for us in full transparency to the public to make sure that we're making the best decision because at the end of the day, these are taxpayer monies. And so that's all I'm asking. If you could, you know, just grant us one more meeting to be able to bring that. Is this time sensitive? If I we can't pursue any other conversations regarding the property, so if we were to have interested parties at this time, we wouldn't be able to pursue those conversations. Okay, so it doesn't seem like it's time sensitive, though. Um, if so. I can respond to your question. Mm -hmm. Councilmember, I actually really appreciate what you just said. Honestly, I do. But usually we tell each other before the meeting we're going to do this when it's in our district. The concern I have is I've met with Laura Merrill about this. That's how long this has been going on. I know the surplus land act is in effect. I know there's concerns about other surplus land. There is very little you can do with this land. Frankly, the faster we can dispose of it, the better it is for the, for the citizens of Fresno because there's not a lot of marketing opportunities. Just one question. This is declaring the property surplus, which means that it would have to go out to a public bid, correctly? Correct. And that public bid would have to come to the council for approval? Correct. And at that point, are we required to approve the sale, or can we deny the sale? You can deny the sale. Okay. All right. It looks like we're ready to vote. Uh, we're going to do a roll call. The motion in the second is to approve the declaration of this property surplus. If you vote yes, the property will be declared surplus, and the public bidding process would begin. Roll call, please. Councilmember Bredefeld. Yes. Councilmember Chavez. 
Council Member Esparza? No. Council Member Carbasi? Yes. Council Member Soria? No. Vice President Capriolio? Yes. President Arias? Yes. Five two. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is item 1J. Councilmember Carbasi, you have the floor. I just have a question for transportation, Director Barfield. And I apologize for not calling you about this sooner with the coronavirus issue. We've been really busy. Oh, no, I understand. That. Um, just a quick question. <laughs> I'm going to support this. I just have a question. Um, now, I know we're doing this with, Plas I think, Placer County Sheriff's it, we, we do uh, bids with other companies because we have more leverage for... Yes. Machine, but got it. And I, that's understandable. Now, we do have a local provider, um, Cook's Communications, that Correct. does this kind of work. Why are, are we in the future going to have a bidding process where we can include local providers for this kind of work? So we actually do use Cook's. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we use Cook's for our um, unmarked vehicles uh, and fire vehicles. Um, okay, but in the future, if we do, so you're using them right now, if we do, will, will, will there be a bidding process or is there a reason why we don't do that because we have to partner with other counties? So uh, we actually get a better bang for our buck by doing it this way. Um, Lear can actually do more vehicles at a time than Cooks. So it's, a, it's an issue of volume too. Um, when, we, when we order 30 police cars, we will, they basically schedule us uh, in blocks and can get eight done a week. Cooks can only give two to four. Now, could we give part of our business to Cooks? That way we keep those dollars local. Is that realistic? No, it, 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 and that's why we use the, for other the, things. the, the fire, uh, the motorcycles, uh, and all uh, unmarked vehicles. I really appreciate that. I move yeah. to approve. There's a motion by Member Carbossi, second by Member Chavez. Is there anybody for the public that wishes to address the council on this item? Is there any questions from the council? We're going to do roll call. The motion is to approve this item. Roll call, please. Councilmember Bredefeld? Yes. Councilmember Chavez? Yes. Councilmember Esparza? Aye. Councilmember Carbasi? Aye. Councilmember Soria? Aye. Council Vice President Capriolio? Yes. And President Arias? Aye. We will now return to item 1F, as in Frank. Councilmember Bredefield, do you have yeah, a question? Yeah, I, I got my question answered. I have a motion to approve. Motion has been made to approve, seconded by Member Chavez. Is there any member of the public that wishes to address the council on item 1F, as in Frank? Seeing none, roll call, please. Councilmember Bredefield? Yes. Councilmember Chavez? Yes. Okay, couldn't hear you, sorry. Councilmember Esparza? Aye. Councilmember Carbasi? Yes. Councilmember Soria? And Vice President Capriolio? Yes. President Arias? Aye. 7 0. This completes the contested consent calendar of items. Now we're going to go to scheduled public hearings. The first one is the 10 a.m. hearing. It's the hearing to consider the vacation of a portion of of the East Palo Alto Avenue, west of North Fresno Street in Council District 6. Staff, you have the floor. Good morning, Council President, Council Members, and staff. My name is Jason Kamet, Chief Jason, Server of Public Works Department. Jason, can I just interrupt Department. you? I just want to make a motion just to approve. Second. The motion has been made by Council Member Bredefield. Okay, uh, second we, by... We, sh we need correct. to actually open a public hearing. Yes, and second. So I request that at this time. Yes, second by Council Member Chavez. We will now open up the public hearing for this item. Is there any members of the public that wish to address the council in public hearing for the vacation of a portion of East Palo Alto Avenue west of North Fresno Street? Seeing none, we will return it back to the council. There's been a motion made to approve. Second, we are now closing the public hearing. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Council Member Bredefeld? Yes. Council Member Chavez? Yes. Council Member Esparza? Aye. Council Member Carbasi? Aye. Council Member Soria? Council Vice President Capriolio? Yes. President Arias? Aye. We are now in the 1010 public hearing. This is a hearing to adopt 
Resolution and ordinance to annex territory and levy a special tax in the city of Fresno related to District 9, annexation number 43, parcel number 403-0307 in the southeast corner of Shepherd and North Chance in District 6. We will now open up the public hearing. Is there any members of the public that wish to speak to this item? Seeing none, we will return to council. Is there a motion to approve? Yes, motion to approve. Motion made by Council Member Bredefield, second by Council Member Soria. We will now do roll call in approving the annexation and special tax on this item. Council Member Bredefield. Yes. Council Member Chavez. Yes. Council Member Esparza. Aye. Council Member Carbasi. Aye. Council Member Soria. Council Vice President Capriolio. Yes. And President Arias. Yes. 7-0. Item is approved unanimously. So now we are in item 3A, general administration. Is there a motion to approve item 3A, which is the temporary delay of employee security protocols due to the coronavirus? Yes. Council Member uh, Esparza, you have the floor. Yes, yeah, so, uh, you know, take a look at the emergency predicaments that we are in. Uh, a lot has actually happened since this uh, resolution was written. Uh, you know, and even despite city managers' uh, necessary actions to uh, send non essential folks home or have them work from home, uh, we still don't have a frame of reference for what it's going to look like when we uh, start screening our employees. And we know enough about the virus and have enough data to know that uh, it's not a good idea to have a whole bunch of We need to have folks at least six to seven feet apart. Uh, so I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve and open it up to the city manager if he wants to try it. Thank you. The motion has been made by Member Esparza, second by Member Chavez. Is there any members of the public that wish to address the council on this item? Please step forward and identify yourself, and you have three minutes. Uh, Sam Frank, president of FCA. I just want to thank you all in advance. I'm being a little presumptuous here, but I just want to thank you for pushing this out. The last thing you want to do in a crisis is to make it worse. So um, that's all I have to say is thank you. Thank you. The motion has been made to approve. Second by Member Chavez. Roll call, please. Council Member Bredefeld? Yes. Council Member Chavez? Yes. Council Member Esparza? Aye. Council Member Carbasi? Aye. Council Member Soya? Vice President Capriolio? Yes. Yeah. President Arias? Yes. The item is approved unanimously. Thank you all for today. Um, just a quick notice before we leave and adjourn the meeting. As you can see, we're trying to get through items as quick as possible, um, and we're happy to make some last-minute adjustments given the emergency situation that we're in. We are going to try and improve the telecommunications um, system so we can hear the council members who may be participating from home in isolation more effectively, and we will also try and get as much information out to you as possible. With that, and before we end the meeting, we will go to unscheduled oral communications. Anybody from the public wish to address the council? Please step forward. J.D. McCubbin, uh, 617 East Cambridge Avenue, Fresno, California, 93704, District 1 voter and the resident. Um, I came down here to... Uh, talk about two or three things. I realize the time's limited, and I listened to the councilwoman's uh, how good a job is being done. I'm sure you all are working very hard, but not everything is working from the outside. I called the city council, city uh, operator, city phone number yesterday afternoon during business hours and the way you handle overflow calls into your um, answering service during business hours they don't have a capability of transferring calls so i wasn't able to call the city office that i wanted to during business hours so 
could you fix that? Yesterday, crossing a parking lot, I, uh, some guy ran into me and I called 911 to report a hit and run and I have no confidence that the 911 operator took sufficient information to help the police department capture or run that guy down. The answer was, well, we'll send a uh, patrol or we'll send somebody out and we'll contact you tomorrow to take a full report. Well, that doesn't do much good when they're uh, driving away. Um, so what are you doing about uh, communicating? I really came down here to get a copy of the emergency order because if you don't have a computer up and running at home, to print it out, it's virtually impossible to get. And since most of the public access computers are down, how are you communicating with the people that don't have internet tied to the city? And I've been working on trying to improve communication for myself. So, so that's one item. The second item is, since there's a big homeless problem that in 10 years the city didn't solve, uh, what are you doing about making sure that open businesses have all of their uh, toilet facilities open as a condition of business? Many of the convenience stores don't let the customers use their toilets. And are you providing uh, hygiene uh, stations out in the community for all the people that need them. Rent pot, porta potties, have wash stands, hygiene's a problem. And then the last thing that I really want to bring to mind is I was listening to a doctor on KPFA this morning who said that she was talking about the problem of the virus and her advice was if you live in an air pollution district you're going to have higher risk factors than other people. She said, stop smoking, clean up your lungs. But since we live in one of the worst air pollution districts in America, all the fact, I asked her if she had a multiple of the factors of risk for, that are being generally broadcast. She said, no, we haven't even started to look at that. So whatever the problems are nationally, they're going to be lots worse here. So. Can we have more hygiene out in the community that's Thank available you. to everybody? Thank, Thank you. you. In response to your first question, you can get a copy of the emergency order by stopping I've by. I've already at gotten it. City you Park. have an excellent clerk's office. I wish the rest of the city was as good as that. Thank you. That's the best department. They're always responsive. Thank they you. They do the best job. Thank you. And secondly, we are working to get um, wash stations and hygiene and restrooms into the homeless area. So but my we'll specific suggestion was require businesses that have toilets to make them open to their customers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This concludes the meeting you. of March 19th, 2020 at officially 1043. Meeting is adjourned.